So welcome to APSC 181 Dynamics. My name is Fawad and I will be your instructor for this course. Uh, I am a lecturer at the School of Engineering and I will be teaching this course. It is a three credit hours course and it will be having a two hour session for tutorial also each week. We will be having two sessions each week for class. I will start with my own introduction. Um, I have a PhD in structural engineering, more specifically earthquake engineering, an area which deals with um, how the structures vibrate under ground motions, shakings, uh, and how we can make them more safe and resilient to any vibrations or any kind of dynamic loadings. Uh, my PhD is from Asian Institute of Technology from Thailand. And uh, my specific area, as I have mentioned, is structural dynamics, how the structures, uh, assembly of different components, buildings, bridges, and other kinds of structures vibrate or shake or get damage as a result of ground shakings and as a result of other dynamic loadings, for example, wind loading or uh, impact loading, blast loading, for example. Um, my background, I have been an assistant professor of structural engineering uh, at the National University of Sciences and Technology in Pakistan from where I originally belong. And I am currently also an adjunct faculty at the Asian Institute of Technology in Thailand, uh, the same university from which I did PhD from. So this was my brief background. So before I actually start, I want to set some things clear and actually see where we actually stand in this course. If you look at all of your four-year engineering degree, I assume that you may have backgrounds from mechanical, electrical, uh, civil, and other fields. So if you classify applied physics or engineering physics into different main branches, you may have mechanics, you may have thermodynamics, electricity, and some other fields of applied physics. You may be having some courses from the other fields of this applied physics, but this particular course will be under this umbrella, mechanics. You already have one course in this particular domain, which is APSC 180, statics. Uh, so the dynamics will actually be belonging to this particular family of applied physics. Uh, mechanics itself can be classified into some other branches or types also. We have a type of mechanics where we deal with rigid bodies, which means bodies uh, which we can assume to remain constant in shape. So no change in their shape. We have a deformable body or flexible body mechanics. Uh, the mechanics of bodies which actually have some deformations under applied loadings and we sometimes calculate or interested in, in calculating those deformations. Uh, we also have a branch of mechanics related to the uh, statics and dynamics of fluids. So we call that fluid mechanics. Uh, then again, it have, for example, Newtonian fluid mechanics, non-Newtonian fluid mechanics, ideal fluid, real fluid, and some other sub-branches. We also have quantum mechanics and relativistic mechanics, uh, an area which we may not touch in this particular uh, course. But you might be having some of the topics or courses related to that, depending upon your, your uh, undergraduate degree. So um, we will be dealing mostly with rigid body mechanics and deformable body mechanics. This is an assumption we have to make while studying mechanics of an object, whether it is a rigid body or a deformable body. Uh, if we are interested in uh, calculating, for example, internal stresses produced in an object because of an applied loading, we should consider that as a flexible body or deformable body. However, if we are only interested in what path it will follow under an applied loading, what will be the velocity or acceleration of that object, we can assume for the purpose of calculations that the body is rigid, which means its shape will be constant. So it depends on what is being studied uh, about the assumption whether the body we are studying is rigid or deformable. In rigid body mechanics, we have uh, statics and dynamics. Statics means mechanics of an object or rigid bodies which have no movement. So you already have APSC 
180. Dynamics will be the study of motion and accelerations and velocities and the path followed by an object and all that. And that is our course APSC 181. In that whole area of uh, rigid and deformable body mechanics, uh, we have some other courses also. You will be having that in year 2, 3 and 4. For example, you will be having APSC 260. It is called Mechanics of Materials. Mechanics of Materials. Actually, it will be belonging to this um, uh, deformable body mechanics because we will be studying how much a particular object deflect, deform, twist, shear deformation, for example, how much a particular object slides, slips under particular applied loading. So all that science is actually mechanics of solids or it is also sometimes called as strength of materials in different universities. You will also be having APSC uh, 261. It is theory of structures. It also actually belongs to the same line of courses from engineering mechanics to, de to rigid and deformable body mechanics. Some other courses, for example, you will be having the second part of mechanics of materials. Uh, it will be uh, in your fourth course. Similarly, you will be having the finite element methods, another course in your fourth year. Not all of you will be taking it, but many of you will be taking finite element methods, another course which is belonging to the same line of knowledge, right? And some other also, depending upon your particular area, you may have machine design, you may have reinforced concrete design, steel design, all of those courses will be actually using the concepts you studied in APSC 180, 181 and APSC 260 and 261. Uh, our course dynamics can be further divided into two parts. One will be kinematics and I will be using that word again and again. So it is better to define it now. The second part of dynamics will be kinetics. As the explanation reads that if the motion of body is without reference to the forces which cause that uh, motion is studied, we call that as kinematics. So if the force is given and you are asked to calculate some of its effect, this is not kinematics problem, that will be kinetics problem. So in kinematics, we don't study the forces which cause a particular motion. We only focus on the geometry of that motion. For example, what path a particular object follows and what will be the velocity and acceleration at different points in that path for that object. All that will be studied without reference to what force produced that motion in the first place, right? If we study that, it will be kinematics. But if we also study the force which produced that motion, and then we try to develop a relationship between that force and that motion, that will be kinetics, right? If, for example, um, you have a particular plane, is, this is a 3D view. So, for example, I have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So, it's a plane. You are seeing that plane in three dimensions. And I ask you that, let's say an object in that X, Y plane started its motion from this particular point. And at that particular point, the time was equal to zero. So, you start recording the motion at this particular point. Then that particular object move to the next point, maybe here, then next point here, and then next point here. And for each of the points, I give you the time. For example, here time was one second. Here the time was two seconds. And lastly, for example, here the time was three seconds. So I give you the path of a moving object, and I give you its location at different points. And I also give you the time uh, which it took uh, to reach that particular point. So from first time t equal to 0 to 1 second, it moved from this point to this point. Then t equal to 1 to 2 second, it further moved. Then t equal to 2 to 3, it further moved. So it covered that path in 3 seconds. 
and if i ask you that what is the velocity of that particular object at t equal to 1.5 seconds if this is the question given to you there is no mention of what actually caused that motion in the first place and the only thing you need to do is to analyze the geometry of that moving object in order to work out the velocity because the distances between two points and the time required to cover that distance is also given so you should be able to work out the velocity at any time instant during that motion without actually knowing what produced that motion in the first place so this is a classical example of kinematics where you are studying the geometry of motion irrespective of what force caused that motion and uh, since you can have an idea about this particular problem that since the position or location of that point is given moving object is given and the time is also given you should ideally be able to calculate velocity we are not actually solving it now but i'm just giving you an example of what kind of problems you can expect in kinematics right about the uses of this course i have already discussed that there are several courses in your third year fourth year which uh, will be actually using the concepts studied in apsc 180 and 181 for example particularly dynamics will be used in uh, my favorite subject vibrations i actually belong to this area so i'll study different uh, objects vibrations under different types of dynamic loading by dynamic loading i mean a loading which is fluctuating in time right so it doesn't have a fixed constant amplitude its amplitude is varying with time right so it is like push and pull or some periodic loading repeating again and again but not constant with time uh, electrical engineers and mechanical engineers will have uh, courses in controls then robotics also um uh, it has application in astrodynamics satellite mechanics machine dynamics for mechanical engineers and so on so this list when i started actually collecting from different textbooks was so long that i just decided to use some major heads and then leave that all for you similarly the other uh, part in the same knowledge domain which is mechanics of uh, deformable bodies will also have certain applications and i have discussed that some of them belong to civil engineering for example steel and concrete design soil and rock mechanics uh, geotechnical engineering structural analysis and finite element analysis studied by both civil and mechanical engineers machine design aerospace each of them is a separate whole ocean of knowledge which you can go into later